Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel 11 and today we're going to be looking at uh, how to make this simple uh, footprint effect. I can use it for a tire as well and maybe let me first pause uh, that for a bit so that you can see how it works with uh, the uh, the footprints. So you can see uh, that uh, you get the stamps uh, made by uh, the character and uh, you can also uh, use it for a tire. And uh, yeah, the results I think look confusing and it's very easy to set up as you will see. So let's jump in. Okay, so I have uh, the setup here. We have the tire, we have the character. I want the shoes and the tire to be in the same collection called X. And uh, now we can go to geometry nodes and start setting up things. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is need a plane. Uh, that's going to be our ground. Uh, make sure that uh, the, the four steps and the tire interact with that. Uh, but uh, we're going to need a lot of geometry to accommodate uh, the resolution needed for the footprints. And uh, I don't want to subdivide the entire mesh. So that's why I'm just going to add a small part that I will subdivide, separate it as an object like this. Maybe add a few subdivisions like that. And uh, this is going to be uh, the mesh that uh, we use here. We want this mesh to have the same material so that you can't see the seam that makes up these uh, planes. So I'm going to add... Let me use my quick my text folders to search for a ground material here, a ground PBR material that I could use. Let's go with something like this. Yeah, perfect. You can see that uh, you don't really see any seam here, so that's nice. So let's select this mesh and uh, subdivide it. Go to geometry nodes, and the first thing we're going to do is subdivide it a few times. So with a subdivide mesh, a subdivide mesh. So let's do a couple. You can see if uh, you don't have enough horizontal subdivisions, uh, these uh, subdivisions are going to be more rectangular. Uh, so I want to add a few subdivisions so that these are more, so that these are squares like that. It will give us a better effect. Okay, now let's go to the simulation part. I'm going to add a simulation zone here, connect the geometry to geometry and the, uh, the output to the output. That, go back to frame one, nothing happens. So what we want to do is get the proximity of these footprints and to the to the mesh. So I'm going to use geometry proximity. Uh, the target is going to be our collection. So I'll bring that in. I reset children, our relative. Uh, in need. This coming as instances, we need to realize them so that we can use their geometry and uh, connect that there. We can look at the distance and you can see what we have. Already, if we do a set position here, set position here and you can see we can use this distance here for something so if i do a uh, combine x y and i uh, just push this in the z axis you see what we're getting it's not exactly what we want uh but uh yeah it's producing something the reason it's going up is because uh white values remember are just numbers going above zero so they're adding that distance uh, to this position and then that's why they, they are flying over. Uh, we don't want to do that. We just want to get this distance. Let me actually first come here. Uh, we want to use a, a math node here with multiply to make the mask tighter. So something like that. And uh, we, do, we don't just want to push these down. We want to push them in the direction of uh, the normals, which will give us a good... Uh, imprint of impression of uh, these uh, threads. Uh, so to do that, we're going to sample nearest surface and uh, we want to get the normal of the nearest surface. So we're going to get the normal and of course the target is going to be, uh, we, we want to first make sure this is a vector. Yeah, the target is going to be this realized geometry. And now if we plug this into the offset, let's go back to frame one, uh, everything it looks like that. Uh, we need to normalize uh, this uh, using a vector math. Uh, normalize this uh, so that the values don't extend over one. So uh, that's still too fast. And uh, scale it down uh, to something like 0 0.1. And uh, that's much better. But uh, everything is being pushed as this uh, moves around. Uh, we want to just push the faces uh, where we have using this mask here. So I'm going to use another scale here, but this time use this uh, this mask we created previously. 
there let's preview how that looks now let's reduce the scale even further maybe 0 0.001 or oh, another thing we, we can see is that uh, if we look at this mask uh, let me first uh, bypass this uh, if you look at this mask it's it's giving us the opposite of what we want so we are scaling the white part instead of the dark area so we need to invert this using a ramp and uh, that will also make sure that the proximity distance then does not is clamped uh, to the value of one so it doesn't do what we had before if i bring this back and uh, turn off this so uh, the vertices will not extend just go to infinity scale to infinity because uh, this ramp is going to clamp uh, at the scale uh, to a value of one add a, a ramp here to flip uh, this mask so that uh, the white area is where our is our proximity and uh, the black area is not scaled the scale the uh, the normal we get from this nearest surface are uh, using this mask and uh, now we should have something yeah like an imprint like that it seems that our scale value here is a bit too low so let me bring that back now you can see we have something functional we need to smooth it out so to do that i'm going to use a blur attribute node uh let's change this to vector drag that in there and just smoothen this set shade smooth uh, there and uh, we should have something better uh i can can i multiply this by 100 let's see what we get ah i need to i need a small figure here i guess Okay, if you if this figure is very small, you get this mud effect. So it's like uh, the tire is going through mud. Uh, maybe that's what you want, but uh, just keep this uh, figure a bit up so that uh, there isn't a large fall off to create that kind of animation. So let's do a ten here. Yeah, it's like the mud is settling a bit. And I, I want to amplify this effect a bit, so I'm going to come in here and uh, maybe scale this by. 1.2 and see yeah that amplifies uh, the results a bit and uh, that's what we want uh, we can subdivide this further to get more detail it's going to be a bit slow but uh, yeah you can see how that now if you look at uh, the material or oh, I need to bring back the material here using a set material okay you can see our footprints but uh, when you add other material it becomes harder to see the footprints so what I'm going to do is go to the shader here that in the footprint area so to do that i'm just going to go to the material and uh, add a texture coordinate nodes i want to get the object uh, separate the x and y so that i can look at uh, the z position here because i want to create a mask depending on the elevation or uh, the imprint we have so i'm going to use a map range a map range and uh, map from negative one to that and uh, just use a ramp to find where my footprint is uh, you can see that uh, i'm starting to see that something like that and i'm also going to add another ramp here to just make that more visible now what i can do is just darken this using a, a curves rgb curves here if i preview this i just darken this a bit like that and uh, just use this as the factor uh, seems to darken the opposite side so i'm going to invert this color yeah something like that and then now if you preview this and uh, that's how you do that that's the gist of it i'm going to be adding the project files on my patreon page so that you can explore them i think i added i added another multiply here uh that uh if i increase a bit uh you can see the impression becomes more strong uh that's it uh thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video the third model i got from sketchfab uh, by this uh, by kyle button i'll be adding links in the description